Hi guys, Dark Star Sword here. I just wanted to give you a quick demo of a couple of things to look out for as you're fixing lighting and shadow shaders. I noticed that there's uh, quite a few more people actually trying to fix shadows these days, so I thought it might be handy to just give you a little tips and tricks video to show you a couple of things to look out for. The game I'm using at the moment is Demonicum. I've just spent a little bit of time in the starting area fixing the lighting issues. I haven't fixed absolutely everything. There's still an issue with the specular highlights which are sitting above surface depth and there's probably other issues further into the game. But uh, this game just seemed like it would make a good demo because there's a few uh, related issues here that I've seen in some other games that uh, can make things a little bit tricky so I thought it would be good to actually sort of show a game that has these issues. So firstly I'm going to just uh, disable some of the adjustments I've made to a couple of the shaders in this room so that you can see what the game looked like when I first loaded it up which looked like this. Uh, as you can see it's a pretty big mess. Uh, first thing you'll notice is that the character looks kind of strange it's like there's a second copy of him at a different depth to the first one that's missing color it's just like this white clone uh, and the clones the, the the color copies of him are it's kind of transparent you can see the background through them there's a few other issues you might notice here uh, in particular the shadows kind of do this weird jump at a particular depth a particular distance from the light source you can see on that one there and you can see as I go up here the same sort of things happening there anyway I'm sure this is really horrible to to look at on the video so I'm just going to go ahead and fix the uh, worst issue here there we go so that issue there that I just fixed was a halo issue um, that's exactly the same type of halo issue you'd find on you know something like water or, or fog or smoke or, or fire or something like that. Any, any semi-transparent effect will often have that kind of issue and in some games like this one lighting does as well. Unity games are also notorious for, for having that problem um, and we also had the same issue in Metal Gear Solid 5 and I'm sure there's going to be others. Sometimes you hit it, sometimes you don't. It varies depending on the game. Um, that has only cleared up, well it's cleared up the worst issue but you can see like the, the shadows are still doing this weird jump at a particular depth. Um, the shadows themselves are still not at the correct depth. Now that uh, that jumping, if you see that, that almost certainly means that you've still got a problem in the vertex shader that you haven't fixed yet. So at the moment I've fixed the halo issue, but there is actually a second uh, problem that I need to fix. There's uh, there's another output from the vertex shader that I know from uh, doing a bit of experimentation and uh, looking at the shader that uh, it's outputting a world space coordinate. So I need to apply a fix to that coordinate to match the same adjustment that the driver's doing to the output position. So there we go, I've just made that and um, the shadows are still broken, I haven't touched the pixel shaders yet, but you can see that jumping is now gone. Uh, you might also see the, a bit of a difference here. So at the moment if you take off your glasses you'll see that the shadow on these rocks is now back at surface depth, or uh, roughly there, it can be a little bit hard to see. but uh, yeah, that looks pretty clear there. You can see the shadows at surface depth. So if I go back and remove that fix I made, you can see that the shadow was not at surface depth. If anything, that shadow actually looks worse after I've made that change. And so th this is uh, this is something to keep in mind. That when you're fixing a shadow, there might be several things interacting with each other, and if you only fix one, you might temporarily make the shadows look worse. Now. Um, there was another way I could have made that that I could have changed the vertex shader to make that same result. Um, I could have instead of fixing the vertex shader, I could have taken the output position of it and removed the stereo correction from that. Uh, I'll just make that change now. As you can see, almost nothing changed on the screen. It seems like that has an equivalent result. It's in fact not equivalent. Uh, the shadows are currently broken in a different way. I can't really show you right now what the problem with these is so I'll come back to that in a little bit after we've fixed the pixel shaders. This is a reasonable thing to do to get the shadows to a point where you can start working on them, uh, working on them with the pixel shader, because it's it's moved the shadow back to, to surface to screen depth, which is where we want them when we start fixing the pixel shader. Um, for the next demo, though, I am going to go back to the fixed vertex shader. So again, not much changed. You might have noticed a slight difference in the background, but I'll come back to that. 
And the reason I want to go to the fixed vertex shader is because is to show you what this looks like when I'm hunting them. So I'm going to hunt the vertex shaders for three lights here first. Um, I'm going to hunt backwards because this game tends to crash as I pass vertex shader six. Um, while I've got that um, use rendered shaders turned on. Okay, so here's the first one. So this is what this is what you're looking for when you disable a lighting shader. You're not looking for the shadow disappearing. I mean, the shadow has disappeared, but the shadows only disappeared because the light is gone. The the area of effect that the light was affecting no longer has that light affecting it. That is the effect that you're usually looking for when you hunt a lighting shader. Uh, you, Similarly here, this is the next one I've disabled. The, the entire effect of the point lights uh, from the torches is gone. It's not that I've removed the shadows, I've removed the light. And this is the final lighting shader. This is, this is probably a physical lighting shader. It's sort of affecting all the ambient areas in the scene. Um, it's also affecting those specular highlights that aren't quite fixed properly yet. You can see those have gone. So those are the three shaders uh, that, are, that I'm interested in here. Now, the other thing you might notice looking at these is up in the red text you'll see that these are all actually the same vertex shader. 903-8076A. And um, I, I haven't found directional lighting in this game yet. Directional lighting often has a different vertex shader but it's fairly common for point and spot lights and physical lights to use the same vertex shader. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Depends on the game. Um, so I'm now going to hunt for the pixel shaders for these. So I'll just go through there and see what I can find. Okay, so these three here, are, so that's that's the spotlight pixel shader there that I've disabled. Um, that's the point lights. So I might actually focus on these because they're a little bit clearer. So. When I've disabled these, you can see that it's replaced the area of effect with the light with a sphere around the point lights. This is something that uh, if you're doing hunting in 3D and you go to, to see this kind of effect, you want to set hunting mode to pink. If you set hunting mode to skip, you'll probably just see the light removed like we did before. Uh, in Helix mod, it seems to be a lot less consistent. Sometimes you get this, sometimes you get it removed, sometimes you won't see much change at all. Uh, in which case you might need to go and try hunting the lighting shaders in other in other ways. Um, this shader in particular, this is uh, the shader for the physical lighting and all that ambient lighting that was affecting the walls. This one would be really hard to work out that, that this is the correct shader. So another trick I have if you're finding a shader that, that you can find the vertex shader but you can't find the pixel shader or vice versa. One trick I've got is to Firstly, cycle to the one that you can find. So, in this case, that was Vertex Shader. Um, that was it, I think. Yeah, so Vertex Shader 24, 903-8076A. So, Vertex Shader 24. Now, what you want to do is you want to cycle the other type of shaders at least once. If you don't do that, then the Vertex Pair and Pixel Pair won't be accurate. So, you cycle that at least once. Now, look at the number next to Vertex Pair, which is 22. Now, cycle to Pixel Shader 22 to match that. And now I've found the, the same, I found the corresponding pixel shader. Now, the effect when I've got both vertex and pixel shader skipped is different yet again. I, I don't even know what's going on here. I've got this weird ellipse that's flickering and there's some kind of weird pentagon in the middle of the screen. I, I don't even know. But if I cycle the vertex shader off this one, then, then you'll see that this has got the same full screen flickering effect so from when I found this pixel shader by itself. So that's one trick you can use to find the shader if it's being a bit elusive. Anyway, I'm just going to hit number pad minus to reset all my shaders. I'm also going to disable the overlay now that I've found them. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to have a look at the point light and the spotlight pixel shaders and uh, see what I can do. So I mean, you saw already sort of what they look like when they're fixed looks like that. Now before I go ahead and fix the spotlight shader I'm going to just show you a quick experiment that I usually do to work out what coordinate system I'm in. So you may have seen a post uh, I did a while ago on, on the School for Shader Hackers detailing sort of all the different ways that you can go about fixing shadows. 
and they all they depend on what coordinate system the shadows are in to start with and this is something that varies from game to game you might be in projection space coordinates you might be in view space coordinates you might be in world space coordinates you could be in something even more esoteric but uh, usually you'll be in one of those three and so you want to figure out which coordinate you're in so you want to go through and you want to do some experiments, find somewhere in the shader where you're able to apply an adjustment that moves the shadow. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll do my usual type of trick where I look for where the depth buffer is used, I, I then look at that register and see how, it, how it's used throughout the shader. Um, what I'm looking for is a bit of scaling that's often applied, it's not always applied but it usually is applied, and then after that's been scaled it will be multiplied by another coordinate and that's that's kind of the key thing I'm looking for for where to apply a, a correction once you've found that you know you're in roughly the same spot exactly what you'll need to do will vary uh, sometimes you might find that it's just multiplied by a single thing and you insert the correction there and it all works other times you'll find that it's done something like a multiply and add instruction where it's added an extra offset to it and in some cases you'll have to split that instruction in two in some cases you won't in this case this particular game is doing that i, I found uh, multiply and add instruction here where it's multiplying the depth by some three-dimensional coordinate and then it's adding an extra coordinate now it turns out in this game I need to apply the correction after the MAD. So in this game I don't split that instruction, but in some games you will split that instruction. Anyway, so if I found roughly the right spot, uh, I need to know what coordinate system I'm in. So one trick I'll do is I will just add a value to the X coordinate and see what happens. So I've just added 0.5 to it, nothing happened. Alright, so 0.5 wasn't, wasn't enough. Um, what if I add 1 to it? Still nothing. What if I add 10 to it? Okay, that moved the shadows a little bit. Not much, but a little bit. So what if I add 100 to it? Okay, let's move the shadows a bit further. Okay, so so I'm, uh, I found a spot in the shader where I'm able to move the shadows, and I've moved them to 200. Now, pay attention to where they've moved. Did the shadows move with respect to the screen, or did they move with respect to the world? Well, I think, in this case, the shadows were on the ground over here before, and now they're over on that wall they were hitting that wall before but they haven't moved just horizontally with respect to the camera they've actually moved away from them so they've they've actually moved in a cardinal direction sort of you know north south instead of just left right that's that's a pretty big clue that i'm in world space coordinates if they were moving left and right that would be a clue that i'm in either view space or Clip space. Clip space and projection space are, are just two names of the same thing. Let me go and uh, I'll put those shadows back where they were. Now let me go and uh, add, uh, I'm just going to add a bit of matrix maths here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the same, um, the same type of experiment, but I'm going to do it in a different coordinate system. This is just for a demonstration for you guys so you can see what's going, what, what's happening. So, uh, let me not fix the shadows for this demo. <laughs> Alright. So, again, now I'm adjusting uh, projection space coordinates. So, let's, uh, let's, let's adjust it by 10 again, see what happens. Okay, they've moved a little bit. Let's adjust it by 100. They've moved a little bit, and you can see that they've moved in a different direction to before. And it looks like they're all kind of always to the character's left now. So they've not they've no longer moved north south, they've moved to the left. So if you see that, then that tells you that you're in either projection space or view space. And that's that's kind of the clue that you need to work out exactly what transformations you're gonna need to do to fix them up. Now there might still be some tweaks you need to make uh, once you've done it, but at least now you've got a fairly good idea of what coordinate system you're in. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and actually apply the fix to that now. So there we go. I've applied a world space correction to those shadows and now they're perfectly lined up. Alright, so um, going back to uh, something I mentioned earlier about what happens if you uncorrect the vertex shader instead of fixing it. So this happens here. So you might have noticed that those, that light in the background there kind of 
it doesn't look quite right now. It, it's it's clipped at the sides. If I get closer to it, it's fine. These ones might actually be a bit better an example. When I'm close to it, they look fine. But if I run away from them, and you can see that they start clipping. And now they're not even together at all. So that's what might happen if you unadjust the vertex shader. It can give you a, a good hint because you can see that the pixel shader adjustments the same either way. I've managed to get the shadows to line up with the wall either way. So that can be a really good way to start because doing the pixel shader adjustment can be pretty hard. But then if you've got that clipping, then you might need to do something in the vertex shader as well. Now in this case, as I said, it's a matter of adjusting the... Uh, well, there's, a, there's a combination of halo fix and adjusting a, an extra output which happens to be world space. And the same sort of thing happens in Unity games and I've seen some other games. You might get some different clipping where you just need to adjust the area of effect. Now I'm going to make another adjustment here to the torch lighting shaders. Actually I'll do this to both. So there's the torch lighting shaders and there's the spotlight. So what I've done there is I've just set the pixel shaders to output a solid white. That allows me to very clearly see where the area of effect of the light is. And uh, as you can see at the moment, with the vertex shader fixed, it's in the right position. Now, if I had instead unadjusted the vertex shader, it would instead look like this. So you can see now that these spheres are now more at screen depth instead of the, the correct depth. And this is why when you're close to it, it looks fine because it's still it's completely encased the the area of the effect but uh, as you run away from it you see that those circles have diverged and now they're not covering the effect at all so that's that's why you might need to fix the vertex shader um, but also a good tip for how you might uh, take a little bit of a shortcut so you can concentrate on the pixel shader first so I'll just go back um, Let's actually, there's one other thing I should probably demonstrate with, um, with the Vertex Shader. So if I go back to the completely original Vertex Shader, before I modified it at all, and reload, you can see that before I modified it at all, the light position was already correct. Now that, that halo issue has returned. Let me just clear off one of these. Because the HDR lighting in this game is making it harder to see. But you can see that, that uh, the halo issue is returned, but the lights were in the correct position to begin with. And then if I fix that halo problem again, to make everything clearer to see, you can see that the lights are still in the correct position, and then once I adjust that other output, then now the shadows are correct as well. So I think that's uh, it for... for for this demo so yeah um, good luck fixing everything if you run into trouble then uh, hit us up on the forums and we can give you a bit of a hand um, and of course remember rule number one of fixing games there will be exceptions the rules that I've told you here and the tips and tricks will apply in a lot of games and in other games they won't so takes a bit of intuition stay smart and good luck